Can I have two large double doubles? That's it. Two large double doubles, 408. Thank you. Back to the 408. How can I help you not be terrible? <laughs> That's what you can do. Do for me today what you don't do for me all the time and stop <laughs> being terrible. Ducasse is still on the roster. I forgot all about Vlad Ducasse. I think everyone did. Yeah. Well, here's the deal. So let's talk the difference between exclusive rights free agents and restricted free agents because right. I think that's a big difference. Talk to me. So. Make sure you hit that bell for more Bills news. So an exclusive, a restricted free agent is like, um, who is a good example of a, of a restricted free agent the Bills have had? Gillisley. Um, Groy. Yeah, Gillisley and Groy. That, yeah, we'll go back to that example. That's fine. Mm -hmm. So the way that works is you can tag them as a restricted free agent, either valued at a first round, at a second round, or at original round drafting. You don't get a choice of what round they get to go in. You don't get a choice of, oh, we'll tender them a fourth. That, that, that's not how that works. Really? Yeah, that, it's... Is that why Gillisley was picked up in the fifth round? Is that why he was tendered in the fifth? Yeah. All right. So that's the way that works, right? Is you can go, you can tag him as a first round, a second round, or... Um, no, I got it. Um, first round, second round, or original round. First, second, or original. I like that, because I did not know that aspect of it. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. So I thought you can tag whatever, whatever round you, you want. Whatever round you want. Well, those tags dictate what their salary is going to be, right? Yeah. It, it, it basically just frames their salary. So whatever they, whatever that round pick is supposed to make that right. year? Right. Yeah, the, the league determines what that salary number is. Yeah. Right. Third round is usually a 750000 something like that. Exactly, yeah. Just a ballpark. So, um, yeah, that's how that works. So, like, Groy was tagged at a second, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And Gillis Lee was a fifth. Thank you, you too. Okay. So, with that being said, right, that's a restricted free agent. Now, if another team wants to sign that player to a contract, they can go and send an offer sheet to that, con to that player the player can take one offer sheet back, just like the transition tag, they can take one offer sheet back, the Bills can choose to match it or not, and then if the Bills don't match it, then they receive that round pick in compensation. So it, that's how it works. I like, I like that even better than the transition tag. The restricted free agents is almost as interesting as that because yeah. you'll have to carefully ballpark what that player is worth. Right. Now, the only problem with restricted free agents is you don't get to just restrict, you don't, you don't, you can't just put a first or second round tag on everybody. No, to make no. Them all no there's only one per player, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, you only get basically three restricted free agents that you get to tag. A first, a second, and whatever. And, right. A first, second, and gotcha. whatever they're after. Um, so it's, it's fascinating. The Bills have a lot of restricted free agents coming up. Now, you look at a player like Robert Foster. Robert Foster is not in a restricted free agent. Well, That's actually going to be next, not this season, not next season, the season after that. Robert Foster will be in a restricted free agent in 2021. Now, how does a player get... How does he become a restricted free agent? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, we've used Chris Hogan as an example. Chris Hogan walked through this in this exact same circumstance, right? Chris Hogan was not drafted. He was undrafted, right? Okay. Bills brought him into a one-year deal. Okay. okay? All right. So the next year, he becomes an exclusive rights free agent. Why? Well, because he was on a one-year deal. He doesn't have rights as a player yet. He hasn't earned free agency. In order to be a free agent and, you know, to, to have, you know, your rights go to anybody... Uh, you either have to be undrafted, but as soon as you sign that first deal and it's a one-year deal, the team owns your rights for the next three seasons. So you become an exclusive rights free agent the next season. What that means is the Bills offer you a league minimum contract. You can choose to sign it or not. Okay. If you sign it, then right. you're with that team. If you don't sign it, then the team still owns your rights. Oh, my God. So that's what happens, right? The team has to cut you. Or it has no. to not offer you that contract. Team offers you that contract. They own you. So, like, Robert Foster's playing this year. Next year, he's an exclusive rights free agent. So teams can't talk to him even if they want. The Bills, all they have to do is offer him a league minimum contract for his years of service in the league. 
Wow. That's it. He signs it or he doesn't. Bills still own his rights. Then the next season, Robert Foster becomes a restricted free agent, which is when he gets the round tender. Oh, my so God. So when the Bills went and started dumpster diving for players this season, <laughs> which is effectively what happened and what we're kind of used to as Bills fans, just on offense alone, they've got Ford, who's a restricted free agent in 2021. Uh, McKenzie's a, a restricted free agent in 2020. Uh, let's see. Uh, wow. Lacey, they just signed uh, Deion Lacey to a one-year deal, right? Okay. He was an exclusive rights free agent. So next year, he'll be a restricted free agent. Um, it's amazing. Let's see here. The business side of Dean Marlowe is a restricted free agent in 2020. Oh, uh, Levi Dean. Wallace, he's playing this year. Next year, exclusive rights free agent. The year after that, restricted free agent. So so the all of these young players that they acquired and they were like basically given a tryout to in 2018, are, they own their rights for like two That's, or three years. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Like well, really, when you think about how the bills are going to spend money, the restricted free agents. I mean, you can offer them a multi-year deal, but why would you? Why would you? I mean, financially, you don't have to. Right, exactly. Okay, the saying. restricted free agents, if they didn't want to offer them multi-year deals, they don't have to because they're going to put a, a ground tender on them. If they lose them, they lose them. That's the risk you take, but you gain the draft pick. Yeah. So. Like, the Bills are in a really fascinating situation because they've got a lot of guys um, who are in that boat. Kroom. Kroom's an exclusive rights free agent next year. Jeez. And you're talking about guys that are the nucleus of your young team. I mean, when you, if you ask somebody, who are the best young players on the Bills? McKenzie, Foster, Kroom. Wallace. Wallace. Yeah, you know, those guys are going to come up, but they're, you don't have to pay them. You don't, you don't have to pay them. It's fascinating. I'm wondering if this is very similar to the Seattle Seahawks approach when they were very yeah when they were getting all these fifth round picks and, and they rolled money and over and they over and over and over, and over because they didn't yeah. have to spend it yeah they don't care they don't care yeah the Bills are in are in a wow. crazy position it's going to be hard for them to spend money it really is so but, so they're going to have to be now because of all of that because they can't really extend too many of their own players or, unless they give contracts to guys that really like don't. multi-year deals to yeah. restricted free agents which um, you would normally never do yeah normally never do uh because the, a lot of those guys even though they play pretty well they haven't really proven it yet right they, you know they yeah. haven't you have to have sustainability right does this mean that their aggressiveness in free agency will be even more amplified because no of that? i don't think so i i don't think because remember, right, they have to spend money over the next two seasons. Yes. So they could have a year of, you know, let's let's get some three-year fixes in free agency. Let's get guys who are going to fix the next, you know, fix our offensive line and be okay for the next three seasons, right? Okay. And then next season, next offseason, they go through the same cycle of, okay, we got guys that have two years left on their deal, one year left on, your, on our deal. Let's extend our boys. Let's take care of our own again. Okay. Because you've got some extensions that are coming up that you really do have to pay attention to. Um, so I'll give you an example. Matt Milano. Uh, 